we're going to be looking at some not foam. This is not foam. This is uh, polyethylene. High density polyethylene. Uh, it's not to be confused with the foam. This basically, it, it began as insulation in a space shuttle. And then the sign industry got hold of it and decided, now that's pretty darn hard. You see right here where it's been routed out, got letters routed out. And I can't, I'm trying to break it off with my thumb. And it's not breaking. It's not breaking off. Okay, that's pretty tough. Let's see what one of these saws does. They say it cuts real easy. Well, that's not too bad. For freehand. Let's see what this has other saw does here. Oh, it should be fun. That's a pretty good cut. A little bit of sandpaper, straighten that right out. Clean up, man. I don't know if you can tell that. Pretty much just falls down. And if you have any experience with styrofoam, you know styrofoam bits float in the air and they have static electricity and they cling to your clothes, they cling to everything. So this is a whole lot more like wood. Let's see this. Oh, here we go. This is routed. So this edge, just move around to get the reflection on there. This was routed, and it's just smooth. So saw cut. This is uh, what they call 15 pound. That means one cubic foot. 12 by 12 by 12. One cubic foot is 15 pounds. And it's pretty darn dense. One little thing I wanted to try, and I know this is going to make a little bit of a mess, but That's trippy. That's interesting. Okay then. This is really tough stuff. I think this is, I would consider this denser than wood actually. Denser than wood and it doesn't have wood grain so you don't run into those grains and start jumping and get high and low spots. It's all even, consistent density. Is, drill a hole, drop this eyelid in there with the epoxy at that deep, and uh, I'll be this deep. I'm gonna go over here and put a little grind on this, to put some grit, and some threads don't go all the way down. I'm gonna grind this up so it's at least got a rough surface. That's why I'm gonna do this one with extra extra play. It's got a lot of extra play, and. Uh, so I'm just going to fill that up, drop that in, and let the epoxy dry, see how hard it is to get back out. Put a few notches in it. A little things in there, rust it up. Got it pretty straight for just guesstimating at it, and it went straight in. So, take this little piece of coat hanger and literally force this down to the bottom and around the sides because it's so thick, it's not like it's going to just pour in there and the excess squeeze out. You can have to force some down in there and make sure there's plenty in it. And the fact that I, probably, okay. And the next thing you do, wipe, wipe a substantial amount on here, and you get it smeared out nice and thin. Remember, once again, we're talking about, oh, we're 
we'll talk to you in a moment to get this going on here. And twist it as it goes in. Let the bubbles come out. Let it fall in. Let it fall in. Let it fall in. Twist it a little bit more. Scrape off the excess. Just loose enough for it to fall in without having to push it, but not really any wiggle room. Then the objective is, once you get deep, then you push the, you push the drill bit this way, and then what happens there is it stays a tight hole at the top, and you'll have a little bit of a wobble at the bottom. So what you'll wind up with is a space at the bottom that's pretty wide and is wedged up. So when all that dries, it's actually a wedge plus it's dried. Because somehow, I mean, it is polyurethane formula, all weather interior exterior, and uh, if you're familiar with liquid nails, this is supposed to be three times stronger than liquid nails. Liquid nails is pretty strong. This stuff right here, two-part flexible toughen, wet dry almost anything. Bond almost anything, even underwater, including, including metal, wood, plastic, so. Everything except your voice. Well, I know my voice is changing and it must be puberty. Do a pull, no, how about a pull and twist? Pull. Twist. Lord. No, oh, wiggle and twist. Okay, wiggle. Uh. Okay, the handle. The handle is coming loose. The handle is coming loose, but the bit's not coming out. Uh. Okay, twist. A lot tight premium. I don't think that's gonna budge either. So ah. Ah. Okay, the, the handle's coming loose off the handle's coming uh, handle's coming loose. Okay, so the handle's coming off before the stuff comes loose that we got here. I know this handle's going to... So the handle's loose. But it has not broken loose here. So, uh, I would say flexible epoxy or Loctite treatment. Uh, I mean, that's not coming loose at all. I kind of expected to, actually, with the, uh, with the pliers, I sort of expected uh, maybe to break, you know, break around. The epoxy, the, you know, the piece that it's actually attached to. The, well, if, if this part, here's the deal. I'm, you saw this, this, the screwdriver itself. All I did was scuff it up. And if, if the screwdriver itself holds like that, then threads plus this scuffed up, and that much longer. See, almost twice as deep, so eight inches deep. That's going to be uh, more than enough. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> A little bit of excess, but. Uh, Okay.
Okay, so... Make sure we get straight up and down on here. Center. Woggling, woggling it out this way, just a little. This is not on the This is not part of the program, folks. Huh. There's a flat for something. And you tell it because it's there every time. It takes uh, one full uh, container. And the problem is it's so thick. Mix it up and then try to get it in the, to go down in the hole. And the air when the puck wants to drive it back. There we go. Kind of a poke and peel and rub and wipe. And it's too bad it's not in a squeeze tube where you can just run it down in there and squeeze it, fill it in there. But you have to stir it up first. I was thinking maybe just run it down in there, just squirt it in and then dirt with the stick. <sighs> it's the air pushing it back so you got to make the bubble come up. Put the stuff in. There it goes. Twenty minutes actually gets a little to be a
the problem we're having is this part once you've once you've touched it it puts a texture in like this this side shows it even better where I actually picked it up and there's your fingerprints right here now I've tried to do this and brush that texture out but it doesn't really brush out so there's build up or where, where you try to sand it, like right here, tried to sand it, but then I tried to brush it back out and put texture back going this right to left. That doesn't work. So the bottom line is, if you want the texture in it, don't touch it. It comes off of the, the router table. Leave it like it is. Deal with, you know, put a little primer on the letters, sand them, flat sand them, and... Uh, and, and cut it and look real, 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 real close, like magnify. It's all this little bumpy stuff. Little tiny bubbles. So, when it's routed, like this is, it looks smooth, but it's not. And where's that? It looks smooth, but it's not. It's like this. When it's painted, you can actually see all those little crevices where that, you know you have a half of a bubble, right? If you have a bubble and then you sand it smooth, part of that bubble shows through. That's what you see here. That's the sparkly. Is the the parts of the little hole that's filled with paint. So the only way to do that, so you see here where it's been primed, filled the holes up, and now it's shiny and smoothy. The side like this is this right here this is hammer paint and it pretty much filled in it looks all right so anywhere where it's actually ground down which would be routed out there should be all this surface right here all of this surface has a texture so if you attempt to do any kind of smoothing or touching at all you're going to wind up with this and things like that now this was a little bit, tried to sand around there and just kind of knock down the high spots, and that didn't work. And I also, then I came back and tried to brush it with this wire brush and kind of put texture going the other way. That didn't work. So then even painting, you can see right here where we shot up this way and this way to get the, to get the edge, to want to get all that raised edge painted. And so this is extra thicker and started to fill. So you either need to lay it on like a quart. This is obviously, this is a half a pint per side. So that's one pint. That's $20 a one shot. Um, <clears throat> literally. Let me check this. Look. That. $21. Dude, seriously. One shot. And one shot used to cover in one shot. Now, one shot covers in three shots. They should rename it. It should be called three shot paint. So anyway, so I would, I would have to either put, just keep coating it and coating it and coating it until it all comes up like this. And then the question still remains, if there's any kind of texture, like here, when I grabbed it, when I picked it up, my fingers slipped up a little and caused that texture to come up. I, do, would I have to sand that all the way out to get it gone? Or this, where I actually scuffed it with steel wool, triple lot steel wool, and just mark it. Just marked it. Here's the here's the objective. If you if you lay this flat and just load primer on here and just paint primer in here, very careful paint in here. Just load it up, let it sit, let it settle, let it float, let it level out and dry. Then spray it. Then we just wasted twenty dollars of paint. If I do, if I lay it down and brush in clear coat, and the clear coat goes in here and fills up those little uh, what do you call that? I guess egg air bubbly things fill in the air bubbles, the holes, and let that float out. So it is like this. Just a little bit bumpy, but most of the holes are full. 
then when you spray it, one, it's spraying that, now it's all gold again, but because it's clear, you don't lose the gold behind it. So it's gold over gold base coat, and the clear simply fills the holes. So that's, that's what we're attempting to do. If that, you know, I mean, there you go. If that doesn't work, you just have to throw another load of paint on it. Or very, very, very different. Very different from wood. You know, in wood, there's a certain, a, a certain expectation with a wooden sign, with its actual wood material. You know, that's a certain thing. You prime it. You put two coats of primer on there, scuff it up, and it, it doesn't matter which way you scuff it because you're just scuffing the primer. In this case, it's not, you're not scuffing the primer, you're scuffing the actual um, surface, the bubbleized surface. And remember, all those little thin pieces, here's a bubble, and that beside the bubble is a thin piece that, comes, that used to be around the bubble. That's the urethane. So all those little thin pieces keep sticking up. And the only, only way to fill that so if you want to start over, if you start from scratch and do it right, then you would want to lay this down, take filler primer, flowing filler primer, if you know what that is, and brush it on nice and thick, leave it for a couple of days, let it flow out and settle down and be nice and flat. Then turn it over and do the other side. Then hang it up and paint it, spray paint it, do whatever you're going to do then because then this is all flat and shiny. Well, here's the part of the deal was, it, because it has texture, we wanted to keep the texture. We want this to look sort of woodish. We want it to look like it has texture behind it, not just flat, shiny. So, high density urethane, if you, have to, if you need it in a hurry, you're out of luck because you have to, in order to prime it, now you have to prime it and wait for it to dry. If you use water-based paint, water-based enamel, water-based whatever, you have to wait for the water to evaporate. You can't just load it up there because the water does not absorb into the material. All the moisture has to come out through the material, through the paint, right? Like in wood or especially wood, you know, you go paint, then it a lot of the moisture actually soaks into the wood and it dries from both sides. It, the moisture evaporates into the air and is absorbed into the wood. Here, it just sits there. So if the skin of the uh, water, uh, your water-based paint, the skin dries up, it traps the moisture behind it. The next thing you know, here comes a high wind and all that stuff starts peeling off. So it has to be thin coat, let it dry, thin coat, let it dry. So Nice thick coat of clear coat, then put another coat of spray on it. Here's the result. Hopefully, we can see this clearly. There's rough spots, <laughs> and the, and there's smooth spots. Now over here, where my fingerprints were, is uh, nice and smooth. In fact, if you get down just right, there's still you can still see a little bit of texture. They, texture going this way but the holes are gone so it's nice and filled in and smooth in between here now I put the same thickness of clear coat in here and it's still rough as a cob in here then this other thing happened Can you see this divot and this one and that one and that one that one that one this one Why did that happen? Why did this, you know, why did this little divot show up like that? That is freaky. There's another one. Why did they, why did they even show up like that? That doesn't make any sense at all. 
we have certain some spots not put the, the same coat of clear coat put it all in here nice and thick spread it around let it dry for several hours turned it over put did the other side wait several hours hung it up and spray sprayed another coat of gold over the top and here's a, here's a spot right here that you can see well there's a little bit of a divot showing up right here that it's flat <laughs> So it goes flat. I actually see the splotches are shiny and and dull, really dull, really dull. Now there's certain areas that you might say, well, that's dull because of the way I sprayed very carefully, maintaining maintaining this pattern very carefully, maintaining the same direction at all times, covered the whole thing. So there's no. Or the first time I got down here and did this which I think is where this shininess came from the bottom, but it's not here anymore. So the shininess disappeared here, but it's still here. Shininess is here where it wasn't before. It's got all this texture on it. It doesn't absorb anything. You put clear coat on there. It should be just exactly like this. It should be just like, like this. The whole thing should be just like this. Filled in with clear coat, paint on, you know, color coat on top, no problem. It's filled in. It, it, the whole thing should be like that. There should there should not be any dry spots or dark spots. It shouldn't be there. All right, take 49. Okay, here we are primed with white and a nice even coat of white all over. All the uh, obvious bumps are out. A little bit of stuff here, a little here. You can see in the shade, in the light, a piece of hair. But most of this will be disappear by the time you get back to viewing distance. All that disappears. So, so when we get up here within arm's length, a little bit rough, a little bit smooth, but it's mostly the, it's mostly the same on both sides. So. That's the important part. And the odd, the, the oddest thing about this material is how porous it seems to be when it's non-porous. I'll give you an example. But what I found is, as I spray on there, especially like the gold, it just soaked. Maybe it just soaked into the little grain, the little bubbles. But I mean, after a certain point, especially you put a coat of clear on it, then wouldn't that fill in all those little bubbles? Oh, this turned out. So this is this is what happens when you spray lacquer on top of enamel. <laughs> now you can see right here, it sort of filled it in. This is where I painted the clear coat enamel clear coat and then sprayed in a, a lacquer gold on top uh, so it bubbled up right here but right here it actually sort of worked but not really and I brushed it on thick I brushed it on thick to where it was rolling off so and it's still you can still feel the grain okay so this is definitely not like wood you can't pretend like it's even similar to wood. It's not similar to wood at all. And yes, once again, my biggest concern is when I spray the gold, it's going to go like this. And I'm, I'm relying on this, this far away. I'm relying on the blowback to, to cover the raised parts and to get them co colored in.
secret is <clears throat> foam roller that you don't get the paint in it. You just get paint on it. You can tell by the edge there. It's just on it, it's not soaked in. That's important. Nice and even. Take deep breath. will uh, kind of fade out. You can see them on this side on the red. Out, so 